السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So how is everyone doing today? Had your lunch? Alhamdulillah. So far so good. And uh, I'm glad that uh, I'm getting to interact with uh, the teenagers. Anyone below teen over here? Anyone who is below teen? No. So everyone, uh, in my opinion, is an adult over here. So uh, as you hit teenage, you are uh, to be treated like an adult. And you're no more a kid. You're no more uh, into cartoons. You're no more Xbox, PlayStation. And uh, what, what are the games are there? What are the? Which ones? Computer games, Angry Birds, I don't know. Because when I was a teenager, we had a PlayStation at that time. PlayStation was just launched. It was just released. But now they have, I think, PlayStation 7, 5. OK, 5 is the max. Still, it's a, it's a, it's a very big jump because it's just, uh, I, I believe, 15 years, 20 years. Alhamdulillah, uh, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him, we glorify him, we seek his aid, and we send salutations upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless all of us who are coming here and grant us the actual purpose why we are here. Rabbi shahli sadri wa yassili amri wa halal uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. I would like to start with a story. Uh, there was a man who was working abroad and he was alone in that country. And he used to send money back, back to his family members. One fine day, he decided that, let's pack up. Let's go back. And I've done enough. I don't want to uh, be here. I'll go to my family, and then I will live there peacefully. So what he does, he sends all the money back to his family. And then he just has some money left with him to buy the ticket. And he's coming from a ship. You all know about cruise? Okay, so it's a long journey, you know, like 25, 28 days. And what he does now, he has some money left with him. He thinks the, the food on the ship will be very expensive. And it will be uh, expensive. I don't have that much money. So what he does, he buys some stuff, some snacks, some biscuits, some cookies with him, keeps some cash with him, and then he starts his journey. As he goes, as days pass by, as he's through his journey, uh, daily he sees people sitting in the restaurant and munching on tasty and delicious food. Every day he sees people, they are eating biryani and uh, parathas and sweets and everything. This person, he's happily munching his biscuits. One day he thinks, he gets a thought, what if my family asks me about the food on the ship. What am I going to tell them? What am I going to reply? So he say, he's a truthful person. He does not want to lie. He knows lying is a sin. So he thinks, okay, I have some cash with me. I'll go to the restaurant. I'll buy the cheapest dish. And then if my family asks me, then I'll tell them, okay, I uh, had this. So I won't be lying. So he goes to the restaurant, it's the last day of the cruise. And then he asks for the menu, the waiter comes and gives him the menu. When we get the menu, uh, on the right side, the prices are written. So he does not see the dishes, he sees the prices, which is the cheapest, which is the cheapest. And then he selects the cheapest one. It is a soup, bowl of soup. So the waiter tells him, sir, today is the last day. We have this speciality, we have that speciality, we have... What is the speciality here in Kochi? What's the speciality the, in food? Yes? You don't get a prize. I can't hear you. What's the speciality here, food speciality in Kochi? Anyone from the boys? You all don't eat food? <laughs> so he uh, is encouraged by the waiter to order some, some speciality. He says, this is the last day, so please order uh, these things. He says, no, 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 you just bring me the soup. And the waiter brings him the soup. Now he takes each and every sip uh, with enjoyment, with pleasure. 
And now, you know, he finishes his soup, then he calls the waiter. He tells waiter, please, please bring me the bill. So the waiter looks at him in astonishment and he asks, what bill, sir? He says, bring me the bill, the food which I ordered, the food what I ate, bring me the bill. So then the waiter tells him that, sir, didn't you know that the food was free on the ship for all of these days? The food was free and included in your ticket, whereas you did not know about it. And the person goes like, Ya Allah, Subhanallah, such a big fool I was. All these days he could have eaten anything in the buffet, but he did not think about it. He did not recognize, he did not ask them. Just two minutes, it could have been uh, you know, a great journey for him. The point of this story is, we teenagers, you teenagers, are not kids. And each and every one of us have capabilities, we have capacities, we have skill set which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Don't think, I'm just a kid, what can I do? Because at your age, the Sahaba, they were doing big things. The Sahabiyat, they were doing big things. So don't underestimate yourself and don't live in this state of heedlessness where you don't know about your skill set, about your capabilities which Allah gave you and then finally you go away from this world and then you regret later on. Oh, I could have done this, I could have done that, I could have... So don't be in that situation. And one of the major causes of our state of heedlessness not recognizing our capabilities is desires. Okay, and that's what we will be discussing today. How to overcome our desires. Now, we all have desires and we are basically uh, born with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with desires. Girls are different, boys are different. Okay, and everyone has desires in them. Now, the the actual part is from our side, how do we manage and control those desires? We will be discussing three things here. Uh, number one is the reality of glitter and glamour. The impulsive lifestyle, the secret sins and attractions we have around us. Number two, we'll discuss Satan's traps. How Satan sets traps and how he is on his mission. And number three, the solutions to the modern day temptations which we have. Now everything that glitters is not gold. Remember this, everything that glitters is not gold. We live in a world where we have so many attractions, so many distractions, so many temptations around us that life becomes difficult and I completely empathize with you people. I completely empathize with you people because back then when I was a teenager, I didn't have these, uh, these fitan which you people have today. We didn't have Instagram. People of my age, they know. When we were teenagers, we didn't have Instagram. How many of you all don't use Instagram? Okay, the, the, the girls win in that. They are majority, mashallah. The boys is, I think, 10% raise their hands, they don't use, uh, or 15%, 85% are on Instagram. We didn't have Instagram, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have YouTube. And this is something which we understand. We must understand that life is challenging and I have a challenge in front of me. Just imagine if you have an exam, examination, which you know is the most difficult for me. Then what will you do? There are two things. Either you can keep sleeping and you don't care about it. Or second, study and work hard. Try to find a solution. If I'm weak, take some classes. If, if I cannot manage, take help work on it and focus so you will be able to uh, so there are always these two ways how we go about things either we cry about the situation or 
we find a solution. So I, as I said, I truly emphasize with you people, it is a challenging time. You have fit in at every step. Schools, online, offline, neighborhood, entertainment, everything has challenges and everything has fit now. Now, it's your task. Either you submit to it, you give in, or you fight back. So what, what should we do? What are the boys willing to do? Submit in or fight back? The boys don't want to fight? No one is MMA trained? Anyone wants to come and try with me? <laughs> the girls want to give in or fight back? The girls are, uh, in, 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 they are less on Instagram, see? See a practical uh, demonstration we have? This, this much is enough as a sample in research. We have research scholars here. This sample is sufficient to, to uh, conclude a study. Those who are less on Instagram are more active than those who are more on Instagram. Allahumma stan. All that is pleasurable to the eye may not be good and all that is good for us may not be pleasure, uh, may not have that pleasure right now. Allah mentioned in the Quran, you may dislike something which is good for you, you may like something which is bad for you. Allah knows and you do not know. So it is the latest uh, movie which is released. You think I must watch this, I have to watch this firsthand and you subscribe to it or you download it thinking it's my three hours will be the best hours but it is bad for you. Similarly for the girls, as you uh, grow and you're taking hijab, it might be summer and subhanallah it is, it is hot comparatively here. But this is the test, you may dislike something but it is good for you. Like imagine if you go to a doctor and you have, you have like a, you have some problem cavity or something in your, uh, in your tooth and the doctor has to give you an injection now. Will you like it or dislike it? Dislike it. But should you take it or reject it? What will you, what will you tell to a person who rejects it? Like a baby, he says, no, 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 I just want uh, happiness or I just don't want pain for now. No, you will tell him it's some amount of dislikement, some amount of pain and then you will uh, be good inshallah. So this is the concept of life basically. Whatever, I'm not saying we'll come to it. There is a lot of enjoyment. There are many halal options for us to enjoy. But it's just that we have to uh, look around and focus on that. Attractions and the reality. Since, as I said, since back then and since now, it's a world of a difference. It's a world of a difference. Back then, someone who wanted to commit a sin, he had to sneak out of his house, find someone, some transportation, go to a place and commit a sin. To watch a movie or a song, it was not as easy as it is today. Agreed? Agreed? Yes. Back then, it was not so easy. So now, the challenge is getting the difficulty level. It's not amateur anymore. It's pro level. The difficulty is pro level. And therefore, we have to be equipped in the same way. And by the way, if Allah put you in this situation, you can handle it. If, if you are a teenager now, because after 20 years, it will be much disastrous. It's going to just become more and more difficult like now you have AI you have artificial intelligence and whatnot so it's only going to become the thing is if we are sticking to our principles life will be good challenging times secret sins so secret sins is uh, an area which if we improve our secret life then we will be able to improve rest of the things things which we do behind closed doors chatting with a girl looking at a video checking out instagram checking out uh, social media pages now this is something which again is upon us to improve is upon us to improve the moment we are engaging in a sin 
the moment we are looking at that haram image or we are looking at that haram video, we must understand that we are actually spoiling our brain. We are actually shutting our brain down. You're shutting your intellect. You won't be able to have a problem-solving brain. You will not be that in intellectual. You know, your IQ level will decrease. Because if you don't make use of this regularly, you're just there sitting, opening the app, opening uh, YouTube, four hours, five hours, just there on the games, looking at things. It will actually make you more nervous, more anxious, and you won't be able to deal with the problems in life. Punk influences makes in school. Now again, during our teenage days, there were punksters. There were people who were punk, uh, trying to make things cool. But now every person, every other person can start his Instagram page and he starts to influence you. Hundreds and thousands of followers. Think crazy stuff on TikTok, on Instagram, and then we are their followers. So we have to actually, uh, you know, stop and think. Like, imagine, imagine if the Prophet وسلم, who is the best person to walk this earth, if he saw such punksters, or if he saw us watching such filth, what would be his reaction? And then think about yourself, you as a person, you as a boy, Muslim boy, as a Muslim girl, what, what impression should you leave? Should you as a boy have this punk impression amongst the girls? That wherever you pass by from, the girls, they run away knowing that he, he is a bad person. He whistles, he throws things at girls, and then he wants numbers. Or you want like a dignified personality that the girls, they feel secure when you are around. They know if this boy is here, he will not look at us. He will not look at our bodies. He will not tease us. And if any boy does so, he will protect us. What image do you want as a boy? This is something which you should think. And you have to develop from now. As I told you, the Sahaba, they were teenagers. Still, they were very intelligent. They were sitting with the senior scholars and they were learning. They were going on uh, missions. They were going to places where, you know, today we can't even... Uh, we can't even think of such things where, you know, they were engaged in physical activities, not like us, you know, sitting on the couch and just browsing Instagram. And similarly with the girls, what image do you want that anytime you are out in school, uh, in your university, when you go, do you want every time to become center of attraction to boys? Do you want every time boys teasing you? Or do you want a modest... Uh, to be a modest Muslimah. One of my uh, mahrams, who is uh, uh, like, she's not haram, so she told me, you know, back then, when she was in her uh, engineering college, uh, it was a mixed college. But because she was practicing hijab and she was wearing the scarf, boys never came near her. They always used to be, and other girls, who were like without hijab, exposing themselves. Boys always used to run behind them and they used to cry and they used to hide from boys. So what type of a culture do we want to create? This is something which we, the moment we just start following our desires, the boys will be a punk and the girls will spoil their own selves. They will spoil their own life. So this is something which we have to see. Build a strong personality and not a loose personality. Gaze, again, uh, I discussed this on the main menu. Our gaze, what we look at, has a direct impact on us. The Prophet ﷺ said, the zina, the adultery of eyes, is to look at haram things. Okay? If you look at something, uh, uh, it, it's but natural. You will be walking, you will be going to your school, uh, your gaze will fall. But if you keep staring at the girls, at women, then that's a problem. If you open the website by your hands, you open the page with your own hands, then that's a problem. So the Prophet ﷺ said, the zina of the eyes is to look at things which are haram. Okay.
Uh, another example I would like to, everyone uses mobile over here? Everyone has a mobile phone? Who does not use a mobile phone? Who's the alien? I see one alien at the back and perhaps in the girls. Uh, our, our gaze and our eyes work like a mobile camera. Like a mobile camera. The moment we look at something haram, okay, it gets stored in our memory. Like how you click a picture, it will be stored in the SD card or your phone memory. Or if it's a laptop, the hard disk or SSD. Similarly, when we look at something haram, like you're scrolling the page, you look at something haram, this gets stored in your brain. And now shaitan comes and whispers at you. Shaitan comes and tries to deceive you and tries to enhance these desires more. Now you saw one thing, now two more things, then five more things, then half an hour becomes one hour, one hour becomes two hours, and then you keep on and on and on. You keep corrupting your brain cells, basically. So remember our eyes work like a mobile camera and we should always try to control our gazes. Okay, now we have a uh, impulsive uh, lifestyle. Uh, I have time, right? Okay, this is the timer. Uh, impulsive lifestyle. So we have this, uh, in, in, in the, the problem is that we are too much into instant gratification an impulsive lifestyle, like anything we want, we are very impulsive about it. We don't think, we don't sit, we don't ponder. We just want to do things out of uh, nowhere. So when it comes to fashion, smoking, drinking, affairs, social media, these all become easy when you are impulsive. The moment you sit and think and ponder, Allah mentioned in the Quran, Allah mentioned in the Quran on several places that don't you think, don't you reflect, reflect on the ayahs. So when it comes to fashion, the moment I see Cristiano Ronaldo doing something or Messi wearing something, I start doing that. The moment I see some lousy actress or some celebrity doing something on her Instagram page, I start to follow her. No, this is not how it is. You should have your principles. Not that anyone does anything and then you start doing it. Similarly, smoking and drinking and affairs. You see someone in your school, he's texting, chatting with the girls, then you become impulsive and then you also want to do it. So never have this with you. Never have this type of a mindset. You, know, you should know what you are doing and what is right and what is wrong. From this age, you have to keep learning about it. Uh, lack of concern. Now, I would like to share this one thing. Uh, you know, a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he asked him permission to commit zina, to commit adultery, to commit wrong. And the Sahaba over there, they were shocked. They were surprised at this man. But the Prophet Sallallahu called him close to him. And then the Prophet Sallallahu asked him a question. Would you like this for your sister? Would you like this for your mother? Would you like this for your aunt? The man said no. Then he was told similarly others also don't like it for themselves, for their mothers, for their sisters. And then the Prophet ﷺ prayed for him. And then zina, adultery became hateful for that sahabi that this uh, was something which was very abhorrent for him. So similarly as boys, you should think know that others the girls they are sisters daughters of someone else you wouldn't like it for your sister if a boy comes and teases her will you like it will you like it no similarly whatever we are doing we should have this empathy towards others and not become desensitized that uh, it's just my pleasure my desire my hawa uh, now we'll quickly go to the solution uh, we've discussed satanic traps. 
So we have basically quickly uh, less time uh, and uh, small sweet solutions for everyone. Okay, so first is self-awareness. You have to be living in this world. Don't live in the dreamland. Don't live on Mars. Don't live in places. You belong to this world. So live in this world. This world has challenges. Know about it. You're not living uh, in uh, Mars. You're not living on Mars. You're not living on some other planet. This world has challenges. So first and foremost, solution is we have to recognize we have challenges. There are fitan. Number two, train your brain. Train the brain to have a proactive mentality rather than a reactive mentality. What is a reactive mentality? What can I do? I have so many girls around me. What can I do? Instagram always has filled. What can I do? I always fail in my exams. What can I do because of my cousin, because of my teacher? This is a reactive mentality. What is a proactive mentality? Okay. Yes, I have a problem. How can I solve it? I failed in my exam. Okay, now how can I study? Well, there is fitna on Instagram. What should I do so that I don't fall in this fitna? This is a proactive mentality where you find the solution. Become a problem solver. Don't become a problem yourself. That when people look at you, they run away. So this, train the brain. Train your brain to be proactive. Right company. Right company. In fact, if I was to summarize one solution, it's this. Right company. Your friends. Who is your friend? Because if you want to change you want to go to the masjid, you want to pray, you want to do hijab, but your friend is busy watching songs, movies, and uh, filthy stuff, then it will be difficult for you. I'm giving you straightforward. I had to leave many friends. So will you have to do, and so will you have to do. It's perfectly fine. There, there's no problem in that. If your friend is an addict, an addict, if your friend is doing something wrong, not encouraging towards good, change them period change your friends if they if you can bring them to khair good but if no then you have to be in the right company solution number four knowledge have a growth mindset always keep learning always keep uh, seeking knowledge like you have these gatherings this will enhance your knowledge it will motivate you but then you have to work on it ahead you can't just leave it here because then you'll go after two days again the Instagram comes out again the YouTube comes out so you have to work on your skill set you have to see okay what should I do if I'm opening my laptop or computer and opening some filthy websites let me keep it in a place where my mother can see my sister can see then I will not do that so practically what should I do if I am regularly opening the like things on my phone remove the data pack so things are required it will not happen by itself you wake up one fine morning and mashallah you are the best person in this world that will not happen you have to make the change number five steadfastness you have to be steadfast whatever is right you have to do that the sahaba were like that in one time one day of uh, in history basically there was one day the streets of Medina were flowing with what? Uh, with wine. The streets of Medina were flowing with wine. Does anyone know the reason? Yes. Sorry. Be, 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 I have my. You don't. Be a bit louder. Okay. I, I heard something from the sisters also from the girls. What was the reason uh, Medina was flowing with wine? Allah said, wine, alcohol is prohibited. The Sahaba didn't say, oh, I just have few left. Let me finish this bottle. Let me, they immediately, and wine was expensive then also. They immediately threw whatever they had. This was the action they took. So you have to do that. Now, before my Q&A gets over, if you have anything on your phone, delete it. You have that person whom you're chatting with, Bye bye for now, forever, from now. Similarly, anything wrong you have, you must take immediate action. 
what will happen you are training yourself that I can do it you say no I'll do it tomorrow day after tomorrow then shaitan will take hold of you so you have to take the action immediately last but not the least become an influencer and not a blind follower so you should be making the change you sisters should be making the change girls who are not wearing hijab they should look at you and start wearing hijab boys who are punksters they should come to you see you look at you and change their lifestyle what will require you have to work on that that you become that influential personality you become that influencer that people leave their evil lifestyle and they come to you don't we know umar bin khattab radiallahu anhu when he accepted islam when he came to islam subhanallah he made that change the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when shaitan sees umar he changes his way when shaitan sees umar he changes his way so just imagine the personality of umar bin khattab and imagine the punksters we have today so it's for us to decide that which side we want to be and with this we conclude may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us guidance and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us wa sallallahu ala nabina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in